Right, now, I have slightly cheated. I have um, finished most things off with this paintwork now, uh, and I've covered it in a varnish. Uh, this is a, a semi-gloss varnish, it's just to what I happen to have in the, in the workshop. Um, I would prefer to use a high gloss, but we're going to cover it with a mat. Just the, the, the high gloss helps the decals to move around. Plunk the propeller back on, the motor's in there at the moment. Well, I'm going to come back to the motor later, I just want to get this finished. It's lots of layers, lots of layers of lacquer and you know to harden up the skin and the paint so I don't get all those chipping problems. So I've gone ahead and blacked up the wheels and things like this, put the undercarriage back in uh, just so I can get these decals on and so I can handle this without paint chipping. So decals, now what I do have and I recommend if you're doing dinkies to get some micro sole and some micro set the reason is is that you've got a lot of panel lines and things that are raised and I know that um, this has been filed down by the previous owner which makes things a lot easier uh, for doing this but you'll find with your dinky models and raised inset lettering you're going to find that difficult to make the decal dig in so now I bought some um, ear flosses the Americans call these q-tips for some reason uh, and this is what we're going to do so let's put a little bit of microsol on there and I know that the decal has to go in this area here okay let's put that there for a second or two I have my tweezers and I've pre-cut these out to save you falling asleep. What should we do with this? I have some warm water there and the idea is to heat up and wet the glue on the paper so this will slide off from the paper. Do not try to take the decal off and then put it on. You need to slide this on. So, hopefully that's wet enough. Oh, it needs a bit longer. Which means you're going to get a little bit bored waiting for me to do this. And I'll double check with the drawing that I have here to my right. So, this go near to the leading edge, just past the magazines. I can see this is lifting now, so. Oh, shit, yeah, it's sliding. And that's. Uh, I have the toothpicks here, which I think are quite good doing this sort of thing. And I am now going to use the other side of the cotton bud, or Q-tip if you're watching in America, and just roll that up and down on that surface. And the microsol will make it dig into work okay on the other side we have microsol which go on there and we really I should save time and uh, plunk that in let it soak up these are taking a little bit of a time to soak in they're probably quite old which is probably why you get this problem I've been using the the lid of an old ice cream box to cut cut out the decals that I want. Um, I'm on the kitchen table right now and the, <laughs> the wife's upstairs, she doesn't really know I'm doing this so um, it's just so I could be a bit more comfortable rather than being in the workshop right now. And uh, let's see how that's getting on. Hope it's getting all nice and warm. Now I've decided not to put too much detail into this and I'll tell you the reason why. There we go. The reason is this is not a model. It's a toy. And what 
this is the way I'm looking at it, is that we're just making that toy that we couldn't really have when we was a child or we did have it as a child. And we're just making it just a bit more realistic, you know, a bit more how it should be um, in our own minds. You will get those purists who will say, oh, well, you know, you've got to do it as it came out of the Dinky Factory and all this sort of shenanigans. Well, look, you know, it's an individual choice. I'm never going to be able to get this as good as the factory made it. You know, they used to use cellular paint, cellular paint and you, you can't even, I don't even know if you can buy cellulose paint these days and cooking them in ovens and whenever, whatever else there were methods that were using, factory methods that you're just going to find very difficult to reproduce at home. So you're going to end up with your dinky toy, not your model, looking a bit more realistic. Now, there on, I'm going to put on the micro set now and get another cotton bud. I'll just dip that in there. And this will make it set. Now, I'm not a chemist. I don't know exactly how these things work. And so, um, as promised, I found some swastikas in my workshop. I knew I would find some eventually. Now, to finish things off, I've put the canopy back on and here goes the aerial. Okay, so that is, well, it's finished, except for one thing. There you go. A working propeller so we can get you in a little bit closer perhaps a working propeller just stop it flick it there you go so that is put a little glue in there perhaps that is the finished product and I think I was correct in not putting too much detail in Maybe on my next one I will do a little bit more detail. And the canopy is the original canopy that came with it. Uh, here's the underneath. So again it's quite simple. You can just see the little shadow lines here and there. And I've put in the uh, one or two little details there. And it quite nicely snaps up I would say satisfyingly snaps up and you go when the wife's out or when the kids are out so there you have it this is the dinky ME109 otherwise known as the Emil by the Luftwaffe pilots they really like this aircraft Obviously later on when the G came out it got a bit heavier and uh, so forth and wasn't so quite so popular. Saturday the 27th of June I will put this on eBay and if you want to buy it you can buy it. Um, it'll be running and everything. Saturday the 27th of June this is big. the reason I give them that date is that I've never put a video together before or put one on YouTube so I don't know how to do it so I've got till then to learn so Saturday the 27th of June 2020 I will put this onto eBay but I would like to hear some suggestions of what sort of price I should put it on for uh, which gives you the opportunity if you want to own this to own it and if this video becomes successful I will make another one and probably do an ME 109E again probably in more detail probably with a yellow nose on it and more than likely in the guise of Adolf Gallant but this would have been your standard Battle of Britain fighter uh, so I hope you like it and please give a thumbs up and ring the bell and subscribe 
Uh, I'm not doing this to make money out of it. I do it because I like it. But if I just keep hold on to these things, I'll just have a house full of ME 109s. Um, I will try at a further date to do a video about repairing the motors. This didn't run. So I had to take it apart and clean it and things. And if I can find the patience, I've got another one. I will probably just do a separate video on how to have a go at the motor. Okay. It does involve taking it apart and some cleaning fluids and a little bit of uh, glass paper and so forth. And it's not for the faint hearted. So, but if you really want to know how to get this one going, and, and I can make it go because <laughs> it's not guaranteed once you've got a camera looking at you then I will give it a go so once again uh, thank you for watching I hope it hasn't bored you too much I hope you enjoyed it um, I would like to hear what your comments are good or bad um, as long as you're polite and um, yeah I, I'd, I'd really like to know what sort of price to put it on eBay for and if you would like to see another one done, and hopefully my production and uh, photography uh, gets better, um, then maybe you'll enjoy it even more. Okay, and if you want to know something or you want something put into the next video, then please leave a comment and I will do my best to do so. Uh, this is my first time. I'm not a professional camera guy, or not a professional photographer. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.